looking to up your real estate investing game? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Sub 2 Deals Show with your host, Sub 2 expert, William Tingle. Hey, Sub 2ers. My name is William Tingle of Sub 2 Deals.com. I would like to welcome you to this episode of the Sub 2 Deals Show where we talk about all things subject to. Now, occasionally we will cover other real estate investing topics but it will always be something to help you with your real estate investing business. Today's another episode in our Real Investor Series where we feature real investors sharing real stories and actual deals. Uh, these guys are investors doing deals all across the country. Uh, there are no boot camps or courses to sell with these guys, just real tips and strategies and the things that are working today in their businesses and in their markets. They share all these things with you and they can work for you too. So pay attention and take lots of notes. My guest today is Ben Middleton. Uh, ben is a real estate investor. He specializes in lease options. Uh, he's been investing for several years and uh, has a lot to share with us today on lease options and how they work for him. So Ben, welcome to the Sub2 Deal Show. Thank you, sir. Glad to be here. Ben, where are you actually located right now? I am in a small town called Brandenburg, Kentucky. It's roughly about 50 miles southwest of Louisville. Uh, I just moved down here from Louisville because I got tired of the big city, especially all the crap that's going on up there right now. And uh, I'm a small town guy anyway. I'm, I was born in Danville, which is probably about 10 times as big as it was back when I was coming up as a kid. Uh, my parents left Kentucky when I was about five, six years old. My oldest out of five boys. Moved to Tallahassee and lived there for a year. Uh, moved to Pensacola. My parents got divorced. My dad married my stepmother in Panama City, and that's pretty much where I was raised at. Mm -hmm. uh, after high school, uh, I joined the military for a little while, did a short stint there. Uh, good old Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. uh, Got all that, went back into construction because I've been doing construction. I don't know if when I was in high school, my dad was in that field. He used to do uh, acoustical ceilings. That was our was commercial uh, commercial drywall and metal framing and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, my sophomore year in high school, it was real strange because they were building a new high school there that I was scheduled to go to, but they hadn't finished construction on it, so it wasn't open yet. So they took the other high school and they split shifts on it. Bay County High School was going to school for five hours in the morning, and the new high school I was going to was doing five hours in the afternoon. So from one o'clock in the afternoon until six o'clock, I was going to school. But in the mornings, uh, I was laying floor tile or doing acoustical ceilings and uh, had, had joined a union. My dad co-signed for a new truck on me, and uh, it, it was a pretty wild experience coming up. But now, um, so. So you, you live in, in rural Kentucky right now. You said you moved from Louisville because you got tired of the city. So are you doing most of your stuff remotely right now on the yes. phone? Or? Yes. Yep. You are? Uh, I just had my internet uh, connected yesterday. I've been in this apartment almost a month and just now got the internet hooked up. You know, I did in a slow town, in a small town. They're a little slower, laid back than everybody else. But uh, anyway, I got it going on and uh, I'm going to go full steam. Uh, with, with what I was doing. I was kind of, the last couple of years, um, I've been just doing stuff on and off. I really haven't been very active in, in the real estate community. Uh, just do a lease option here, a lease option there. Uh, just, you know, keep money in, in my pocket. Right. Uh, but I'm set up right now to where I'm fixing to revamp the company. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to register as a business trust. Not an LLC or S Corp. I'm going to go into business trust because there's a lot more advantages there. I'm not going to go into all of that, but you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, and from there, I'm going to be doing lease options. We'll be acquiring low equity homes uh, subject to uh, some of those I will put on lease option. Some, but I want to build a portfolio of about 20, 25 homes to make my steady income. I'm 62 years old mm -hmm. and I just started my Social Security, so that's what's kind of getting get me over until I get back doing doing this again. 
So with, with your background, what got you interested in real estate? Well, a long time ago, I was married back in the late 80s for about six years. And that's the, I got divorced in 91. I've been divorced ever since. I like to say, actually, I like to say single again, but <laughs> that's a different story. Um, shortly after I got divorced, I, I did order the Carlton Sheets system. And uh, I was fascinated by it. But it was just seemed like there was always missing pieces to it. And so I just never took it serious. And as I thought about starting my own drywall business, or crucial ceiling rather, because um, that's what I did primarily in that industry, crucial ceilings. Uh, yeah, I used to load up my scaffold with uh, material, hang up a laser, crank up the boom box, put on my stilts, and I'd rock and roll. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd frame a thousand square foot an hour, ready, you know, which, which most people do a thousand, two thousand square foot a day, and I, I was doing a thousand square foot an hour on my stilts. So I used to be pretty good. My knees are bad now, so I can't do that anymore. Um, and after a few years, what really got me interested in real estate was, um, I don't, I mentioned it in the list, the question list, but I was actually homeless for a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, and during that time, trying to get back on my feet and everything, you know, instead of looking for another career, I got to thinking, well, what would be the next, I mean, having all my experience in construction, and not able to get a contractor's license, what would be the next logical evolution? And I just thought about, uh, I started hearing about people rehabbing houses and stuff like that. I said, well, I can do that. I can do that. So in 2014, I was at a homeless shelter in Clearwater, Florida, uh, called Tent City. They had 265 tents out there, 10 foot by 10 foot tents, sitting up on pressure treated platforms about a foot off the ground. Uh, and I stayed in one of them probably about four or five months, had a tiny little safe link cell phone, had this rinketing bicycle that I drove to the library and back every day. I was allowed one hour on the internet. And it took me a while, but uh, I got on Facebook and I put out there, I, I wanted to find a JV partner to help me do my first rehab. I had no money whatsoever. And after about three or four weeks, I got a phone call one day from a man out in San Francisco, California. And uh, he asked me a few questions, and uh, we kind of uh, uh, congruently figured out what we was going to do together. And he said, well, I'm your man. I said, well, let's, all right, let's put something together. So he sent me a couple emails, and a few days later, uh, we had one under contract, but we weren't going to be able to do it because the financials were wrong. So he got his money back on that one, and... Uh, I found an investor-friendly realtor down there named Nick Bailow. Um, he's kind of a shrewd character to deal with, but he, he, he helped me out a lot. And he taught me a lot. And uh, we ended up getting a HUD house. My partner took his money, bought the house outright, paid cash. And then $5,000 or $2,000 or $3,000 at a time, whatever it took over the next three or four months, he funneled money in, in, or sent money, wired money into my checking account. And I took that money, bought materials, hired labor, and I ran the job. We had a contractor, and I ended up firing him, but that's another story too. Bottom line is, um, with about a $60,000, $65,000 investment, the home sold for $129,900. Wow. Yeah, it sold for $129,900. And for me, it was a no money down deal because all I had to do was stay there and run everything. I was staying, I was staying at the homeless shelter, riding my bicycle back and forth every day, but I, we got it done. And uh, I didn't do any more rehabs after that. Um, we had other financial problems I really won't go into, uh, but um, I did do, I had five lease options under contract, three of them filled through and two of them made money for me. I mentioned one of them in, in the list I gave you. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a pretty interesting deal. This guy was way out in the country. <clears throat> he had just this house out there and needed a lot of work done to it. And um, told me he told me the value of it was sixty-seven thousand. And uh, I, I ran comps on it, and it was more like about eighty, about six seventy-nine or eighty, something like that. But he wanted 10000 for a down payment, and I couldn't get 10000 
And so he was a real stickler, kind of a hard man to deal with. And it took me about three or four weeks to even get him to understand where, how this thing works. And I said, well, I can sell the house for you. I can put someone in there. We'll make the regular payments and everything. You know, but you know, you've got to change these numbers. So we got him down to $60,000. And uh, so that's what I, I sold it to my tenant buyer for 67.5 and told him that it was equity and he was going to put the money in to fix up the repairs. So we needed like about $20,000, $25,000 worth of repairs on it. But actually, no, I think we needed about $15,000 in repairs. Most of it was on the old barn he had out there. The barn was about to fall in. Uh, but this guy, uh, the body, he was a carpenter by trade. He had all the tools and uh, he, he loved the deal. So um, I made $7,500 on it, mm -hmm. you know? Right. And then I did a couple more, I said, I did one more. I think I made 5,000 on that one. And then uh, a couple months later, uh, I moved uh, back to Kentucky. So, so how long have you been investing, Ben? Well, uh, that, that first rehab started in January 2015. And I was about three or four months before that trying to get things together with a man out in California. So that, that's how long I've actually been involved in the business. And it hasn't been that much, like six years straight. Mm -hmm. It's been like six years on and off. Well, tell us about your business model. I know you said you've been a little bit on and off the last few years, but you're, you're about ready to get things really cranked up again. So tell us about, uh, I know you focus on lease options, but I mean, I know that you have a, a particular thing that you like to do. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, lease options is a lot more, there are options within options, if you know what I'm saying there's a different levels of lease options that you can go to. And I'm just now finding out a lot more about those. Uh, out on the West Coast, right now, there's some people are doing what I, I like to call high dollar lease options. And that's where, in fact, I, I did a Zoom call with Justin Chandness here a few weeks ago, uh, strictly about that. Um, people are, are going up there and they're finding areas where a $3 million home is only getting a $2 million or $2.1 million offer. If you can go in there and offer them $2.7 million, they're happy. You put a tenant buyer in there and sell it to him for the full price of $2.9, um, you, know, you get a $30,000 uh, option fee up front, and you work with him three or four months. Um, of course, you know, with a one to two year lease, if you've got a good broker you can work with, you can find a loan a lot faster than one to two years. And I've got a couple of people I'm looking at working with uh, in some of the groups that I'm, I'm in where I could actually make that happen. And so that's one angle I'm gonna be looking at over the next few months, especially later on this fall. Uh, I mentioned in, in a question about the fallout. Uh, I think when you mentioned the 2020 fallout, most real estate investors know exactly what we're talking about. Uh, we all see it coming. We all see it coming. It will be a great opportunity, not just for people who, do, who want to do lease options, but especially people who want to do sub two, because there's going to be so many foreclosures out there, so many people hurting, so many people sweating bullets left and right, and we're the only ones who can help them. We're the only ones who can help them. Banks, banks laugh at them. Uh, I don't know why a bank would want to take they take the house back over because they're not in the business of buying houses. They're in the business of lending money. Um, our service to, to them is also a service to the bank. We keep those payments coming in. Uh, so as I mentioned, my business model right now, what I'm putting down on paper is I want to do, I want to acquire 20 or 25 properties of my own. And during that time, for every one I acquire, I'm probably going to flip uh, probably three or four more. So, that, and it might take me six months to do that. It might take me two years to do it. But that's that's my goal right there. So, are you flipping lease option deals, or are you like wholesaling when you say flipping? Well, wholesaling a lease option is flipping it. Mm -hmm. 
So you're actually wholesaling a lease option. You're just taking the down payment or the option fee and, and let, setting the deal up between the seller and the buyer. Right. I, I set up the deal between the seller and the buyer by creating an option. Okay. And uh, for people who don't understand too much about lease options, I'd like to clarify one thing. Um, a lot of times you're going to be accused by realtors who try to sell in without a license. You're not selling a house without a license. You're not brokering. You're right. selling that option, that piece of paper right there. That's what you're selling. Uh, and by creating that option, number one, you gained equitable interest in the property just by doing that. I mean, as long as you, you sign the paper, the seller signs the paper and you get it notarized or recorded in the courthouse, it's a legal document and you have equitable interest in that property. So, uh, but, and then once you've got that, depending on how much equity might be in the property or not, you can either, if there's no equity at all, you just assign that option to the tenant buyer. Right. And the tenant buyer makes his payments directly uh, to the seller. Mm -hmm. And you don't do this behind the seller's back. The seller's right there and knows everything. Uh, I'm 100% transparent with both parties when I do these things because if, if you try to hide anything from anybody, it's going to come back to bite you in the bottom. I'll guarantee it. Uh, so, uh, but so it is. I mean, they call it three or four different variations of different ways to do lease options, but it's basically two. You either uh, sandwich lease it and collect on the back end, or you just uh, assign it and flip it right straight over. Okay. That's the way I've done most of mine. Right. Well, Ben, what would you say are your best uh, sources for leads right now? I mean, if you, uh, let's say you found yourself in a situation where you were, you were broke and you needed to make some money really quickly and you had to generate leads in 24 hours, what would you do to go out and generate those leads? Reasonably? Well, it might not be exactly 24 hours, but within one to two days at the most. Um, that's close enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I really like uh, the automated REI.com. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a simple platform to use. It's affordable. You don't have to put down a big chunk of change right away. You put $15 in your wallet and do a scrape and a blast for five bucks. And that's, you know, and, and that's reaching out to 100 people. Out of 100 people, you're going to get about a 30, 30 to 40% response. And out of that, you're going to find two or three that's interested. So you figure out of 100 leads, you got two to 3% that you can possibly close a deal out of. Wow. So you just. Right. Um, so, so they'll do, they'll do the scrape and you do a, a text, like a text blast. I yeah, it's a mess. Uh, <clears throat> text blast. Uh, you can rent a phone number from them, like a 10 digit phone number. Now, that, that's something else you need to understand too. If you're doing a, a text blast, mm -hmm. if you're doing a standard text blast, they're only six digits long. Mm -hmm. And those are, if you do more than a hundred at a time, Verizon and AT&T and T-Mobile will block them. Right. So if you've got a full 10 digit phone number, it looks like you're calling out to a regular phone. Right. And a lot less likely to give you a hassle about that. I and mean, with automated REI, you've got that. You can rent a dedicated phone number, your number to keep as long as you keep using it, two bucks a month. The Sub 2 Deals Show with your host, Sub 2 expert, William Tingle. We'll be right back. Hey, sub tours. Have you been trying to learn how to invest in real estate? It can take you years to learn the ropes on your own. How many people do you know who have been looking into real estate investing for years but have never bought a single house? Do you have shelves full of courses but lack the courage to get out there and close on that first deal? Are you tired of so-called coaches who always seem to have just one more thing to sell you that you absolutely must have to be successful? Are you tired of trying to piece it all together with YouTube videos and free forms found on the internet? Is that really any way to build a business? William Tingle has been coaching real estate investors all over the country for over 16 years. And if you are ready, he can show you how to buy all the houses you want, anywhere you want, without ever having to ask a banker for one thin dime. Contact William today at sub2deals.com and schedule your free 30-minute strategy session. Talk it over, and if you think you're finally ready for success, he'll get you going. Back to the show, the Sub Two Deal Show, with your host, Sub Two Expert William Tingle. Okay, 
So I know you use that, and I think you've also told me that you like to use prop string. How do you use yes. prop string? Um, basically, what I like to do is the information I collect from the automated RBI, you can save that in a CSV file. Hang on a second, I got to do something. That'll be all right. Uh, save that in a CSV file. Then you can take a CSV file and load it up into PropStream, and then you run a full date on it. You can get a, a full background on, on the house, when it was built, uh, any, any kind of particulars with it, any kind of legal problems it's had, tax liens, any other liens, all that stuff comes up when you when you run your scan, your property scan in, in PropStream. You can run comps on it just like that. Um, there's all kinds of different things you can do in prop stream. Uh, we uh, we use prop stream in our business every day too. I mean it's great. But but what you're saying is you you'll scrape with the, the automated REI, send out a text blast, and then when they contact you, when they raise their hand and say they're interested, then you'll use prop stream at that point to get all yes, the information yes. on the property in the life. Yeah, you don't have to run data on uh, prop stream allows you ten thousand searches per month. So depending on what your volume is, I mean, I'm not doing 10,000 a month right now, but at some point I probably will be. And that's why I, I, I like to use uh, automated REI. It pretty much narrows it down, you know. If I run a, a search on 100 properties when you only really need two, three of them, or five or whatever. Right. Okay, great. I, I see, I like PropStream a lot too. I, yeah, that's one thing that's hard to, uh, uh, for me to get across to newer investors is they'll do all kinds of research on property before they even know if the seller's motivated enough to deal with them. And I mean, that's just really a big waste of time. You know, you need to get the information that you have to have, which like, like in your example, you know, the way you do business, you use the automated REI to, to scrape Craigslist or Zillow for people who have a house for sale and then go ahead and text them. But until they say, hey, Ben, I'm interested in what you have to offer, there's no sense in doing all that research on the property. Mm -hmm. That's just a big waste of time, don't you think? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, I also use uh, rentalmeter.com mm -hmm. to get a, a, get, you know, a fair idea of what the market rent is uh, right. of the area I'm looking at. And it can vary not just from state to state or city to city, but from part one part of town to the other one. Uh, uh, that, that's one of the tools. Another, another tool I like to use too is called MySmartMove.com, mm -hmm. and you can put that link in, in your advertising. Well, let me back up a little bit. Uh, there's another website called TheFlyer.com. Are you familiar with that one? I am. I am. Okay, because if you can load your ad up there, if you're looking for tenant buyer or a, a, a just a tenant period, a lease tenant, uh, put your information of the house right there, and they will syndicate it out to 20 other different platforms. Wow. Some of them, you know, most of them I've never even heard of. I know Hotpad and, and a couple other ones, Facebook, but uh, you know, the most of the rest of them I've never heard of, but, but people use them. And so if it'll go out there and, and, and put my place out there um, so I can find a tenant where I wouldn't find one otherwise, then it's worth it. And then. <laughs> How are you? How are you normally? I know you use V Flyer. You just told us about that. How are you normally finding your buyers for your house? Uh, before V Flyer, uh, I was using uh, I was using Craigslist and sometimes Facebook. Facebook uh, Marketplace. Right. Right. Yeah, we've used that too. Yep, yeah, works well. Okay. Yep. So, so automated REI, prop stream, my smart move. Tell me about that. That's that's something new to me. About How does what? that work exactly? MySmartMove.com. My smart move. Uh, it doesn't cost you, the investor, one single penny. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you get uh, when you list a house with them, uh, you you have a link. They'll give you a link that you can put in your marketing. So. When someone's looking for, like, like you got a house that you look for tenant buyer for, mm -hmm. you put your ad in B flyer, 
and put that link to mysmartmove.com in there. And so if they're interested, they click on that and my smart move will charge them $39 per person to do a, a criminal check, a, a background check, and, and a credit check, uh, rental history and all that per person, and then send a report back to them and a report that uh, straight to your email. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, that sounds good. Email. So well, that's you, right. uh, that automates that end of it. You ain't got to worry about the background check. You know, you just kind of, you just... Once you uh, put your thing, once you list your house with my smart move, you know, as an investor, um, they they generate a link for you. And you just give that, put that link out in your advertising, put it on big fire, and send the case out to 20 different platforms. So. Okay. So let's say that uh, that you, you use your process, you use automated REI, you go in, you scrape. Uh, Craigslist or Zillow uh, or whatever you're targeting today. Uh, you send out the text messages, you get your responses, and you actually start talking to these sellers who are trying to sell their house. Now, what what are you looking for in a deal that makes you decide whether it's something that you that you want to pursue? What are the criteria for that property that you're looking for that makes you say, hey, this is something that I want to do or no, I'm going to pass on that. Okay. Um, for doing a lease option, the, I try to stay in a general price range of between 150 to 275, maybe 300. But now, is that, I know you invest remotely, so is that in any market that you're in? or is That's there mostly something? markets now. now you know, your high dollar markets, your numbers are going to change drastically. Like out, See, if I was going to do West Coast, California, or maybe Miami, Florida, someplace like that, then those numbers would go from about, uh, well, Miami, it would probably be anywhere from 300 to 600. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, Los Angeles, uh, you want to start at about 300, maybe go up about 800, 700, 800. Uh, that's about a million price range out there. Uh, now, if you're doing the high dollar, Lease options, like I was mentioned earlier, then you had to, uh, that's a whole different game and a whole different set of rules. But you, you would target those between one and a half million and say three million. And you might get one to come back a little higher than that once in a while. But uh, uh, basically, when you're doing that, you're looking for people who are getting offers a lot lower than the fair market value of the property. Yeah. Uh, getting back to just general price ranges across America. I like I said I like to stay between 150 and 275. Mm -hmm. uh, your bread and butter is three bedroom, two bath, uh, two car garage or at least a driveway, carport, and two parking spots. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to have to be in good shape. Need very few repairs. Um, I mean, because when I did in Florida, you know, they didn't need a lot of repairs. But I found a, a fixer upper carpenter who was looking for that kind of deal. And believe me, there's a lot of people out there like that too. Now, when you go dealing with fixer upper tenant buyers, um, you need to screen them a lot more carefully. So they'll, they'll say they want a fixer upper, but they don't have the money to put down payment or they don't have enough rent for the for the option fee. And you've got to really work with them and you might get paid and you might not. So uh, that's something else to be aware of. Wow. But as a general rule, uh, like I said, I look for the bread and butter. Uh, very few repairs. If it's got equity in it, then uh, I ask the, the seller how they want that, whatever. Um, I'll try to negotiate it to where I've got some, some equity in it. See, if it's a $200,000 house and the rest in 190, uh, I, might, I might be okay with that if it don't need any repairs. If it needs repairs, then I'll maybe knock another five or 10,000 off of it. Um, so, so what are you, I mean, is there a, a certain profit that you're looking for on these deals or I mean, as far as, uh, you know, what you'll make overall? Or you know, I like to make between five and $10,000 on, on a lease option deal. Mm -hmm. um, when I do a rehab, uh, which I don't do too much anymore, um, I like to look at roughly about a 40K or, or higher on that. Um, so, yeah. So is there, a, 
Okay. So most of the lease options, you don't stay in the middle of it. You collect. No, no, no. I don't. Uh, I've never actually done a sameness lease. I've never actually done a sameness lease. I mean, I've had the opportunities there, but if I got that, if, you know, if there's equity in it, if the seller is desperate to get rid of it or whatever, and there's 30, 40, 50 grand on equity in, in, it, in the back end, I'll do a sameness lease in a heartbeat. Yeah, I'll do the same place in a heartbeat. You know, I mean, who wouldn't? You know, uh, uh, when I start doing the high dollars on, on the West Coast, like I just mentioned a few minutes ago, um, I will do all of those initially as a sandwich lease because I think that's the best way to make make money on those. Uh, you're when you bought when you got someone buying a five or six hundred thousand dollar house in California, that's like bread and butter anywhere else. You know, but if they're buying a three million dollar home on the beach, whatever, their mindset, their lifestyle, their bank account is a whole lot different than you, me, or anybody else out there. You know, than the average Joe, and so they're thinking a whole lot differently. And uh, so you got to be more creative with, with them than, than the standard lease option. But those deals are being done out there. I know that for a fact. I know a man in uh, Sacramento that's doing them. All right. Hey, guys, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Ben is going to tell us, uh, he's going to give us an example of a deal he's working on right now. So uh, you guys don't go away. We'll be right back. Hey guys, we're back with Ben Middleton today. He is talking with us about his business. Uh, ben is an investor, lives in rural Kentucky and uh, invests remotely uh, doing primarily lease options. And uh, so we're talking about that. We've been, we've been talking about his business and he's going to tell us uh, about a deal that he's working on right now. Just give us an example uh, of, uh, you know, the typical thing, what he's got going on. So Ben, tell us about, uh, something that uh, that you're looking at right now. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the scrapes I'm working on right now uh, are focused. I got one focused on Lexington, Kentucky, and surrounding areas. That's about 80, 90 miles from here, due east. Um, the little towns around that, we're talking about uh, about seven or eight counties. Uh, Winchester. Uh, Harrodsburg, Lancaster, Nicholasville, Versailles, Georgetown. Uh, Georgetown, Kentucky, that's where uh, they make the Toyota uh, Camry. There's something else they make out there too. I, th I think they make pickup truck out there. Um, but th th that's a big area uh, right there. Um, I don't have any one certain one deal that I can give you the name and address right now. Mm. But I've got, I've got that scrape going. I've got a scrape going in Louisville and uh, I've got a scrape going in Indianapolis. And out of those three scrapes, I'm gonna land at least one or two deals this weekend. That's what I'm looking at right now. Uh, as I said, I focus on the bread and butter, three bedroom, two bath, uh, two car garage, uh, in good shape between the price range of 150 to 275. And so that's what I'm looking at right now. Well, Ben, tell us about your most unusual deal. We've all got one that was a little bit strange or unusual. Tell us about uh, the one that, that, that you remember with maybe the most moving parts or that was most difficult to put together. Well, I had one that was almost put together, but didn't quite make it. Uh, but I'll tell you a little bit about that. It was the lady in Clearwater. <laughs> it was funny. I really wish I could have put it together because the only thing that kept us from next putting a deal together was I did not have my own attorney at the time. And um, during the lease options, primarily, I asked my tenant buyer if they feel uncomfortable to bring their attorney, but I don't have one. You know, I just do everything right there at the table and she was uncomfortable with it she was a retired school teacher who had seven or eight rentals and i could have probably ended up getting all of her, all her brother stuff too but she had one house that was it wasn't on the beach but it was close to the beach she wanted four hundred thousand dollars for it 
and which was a little bit higher than what I usually like to work with, but it was a beautiful home, didn't need any repairs on it. And um, I said, she wanted, it was worth 400, and I think she was wanting 375. And I was trying to put it together, I really did. But to, to think I didn't have an attorney, uh, and she recommended me an attorney. And I tried to call the guy, and he never answered my phone. Uh, he never answered, he didn't have secretary, just, I get a voicemail every time I call. And so when I went to call this lady back, she never answered her phone either. And so that was, it was kind of strange. But <laughs> those things happen, you know. Yeah. Well, Ben, how did you uh, learn to do lease options and, and learn to invest? Well, who, who got you started? Uh, well, like I said, in, in, in the 90s, I bought that, uh, Carl, I bought the Carlton Sheets course. I did too. Yeah, $225. Mm -hmm. uh, they were on the, they didn't have DVDs back then, they were on, on the, uh, the VHS. Mm -hmm. Yep, that four, was what I got. I got the green yeah. version. That's that's the one that I bought. Yeah, we had, v, had them on VHS and big stack books and, and stuff like that, little like bound books and all forms of contract was there. But, you know, being a, a basic construction worker, most of it was kind of over my head. And uh, I read it and studied it and just like, you know, it just wouldn't sink in. And so I, I just never got anything going with that. Uh, and that was, like I said, in the early, a bit, 93, 94, somewhere along in there. And, uh, but um, basically when I decided to put my mind to it, um, I'd gotten involved with the internet in the late 90s. Um, spent a lot of time at the library and stuff. <clears throat> and back then, they didn't have the one hour limit on the libraries. I could go in there, as long as no one else wanted to use a computer, I could be on it all day if I wanted. And so I did, I spent a lot of time, two or three days a week just, you know, and uh, between Google, downloading PDF books, uh, video after video after video after video, uh, it, it, it all kind of came together for me. And plus my background working in construction, uh, just you know, got to the point where I said, I, I can do this, I can do this. And so in 2014, uh, I, I just put a post up on my group one day. I said, I said, I want to do uh, a fix and flip rehab in, in, in Clearwater, Florida. I'm looking for a joint venture partner in any one game. And uh, I put my name and phone number out there. And for about three or four weeks, I didn't hear anything. And then one day I got that phone call, that little blue. Uh, Vladimir Gorodesky was his name. Bless his heart. Um, he had a heart attack or something other and died about a year, year and a half after we finished the rehab. Mm -hmm. And I really felt bad about that because he's a lot younger than mine. He was, he was 42 years old. He, mm -hmm. he was way too young for him to go out like that. Because yeah. he was a good man with a good soul. And he, he, he's the man that actually got, got my foot in, in the door to uh, make things happen. Well, Ben, uh, if you could give new investors that are out here maybe listening to this that are wanting to get started, any advice, what would it be? Uh, number one, network, network, network. Um, build as many connections as you can because you never know which one's going to come back and give you the phone call that you need to actually put, put things together or make things happen. Um, get yourself educated. Um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't have to be through a guru, but it, 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 uh, a mentor or someone to guide you along. Uh, another thing, join your local REIA club, the Rio club. If there's not one in your town, there's one close by, I'll guarantee it because they're all over America. Just go on Google and type in REIA club and uh, one nearest you will pop up, I'll guarantee it. Um, and I, I would say right now, in light of COVID-19, and like I said, we're expecting the big fallout this year, uh, I would tell everyone to get your P's and Q's uh, in order, uh, get set up as much as you can to do business, and try to do as much business as you can, because 
you know, there's going to be an overwhelming workload for investors everywhere. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because there's going to be millions and millions of homes that are going to be foreclosed. And there's only so many investors out there to take care of the business. Uh, and new investors coming online. And I say there's probably going to be a lot more new investors coming online because um, people sitting at home, they've been sitting home three or four months, twiddling their thumbs, you know, nothing to do. And they go online and what can I do to make extra money? And uh, uh, getting involved in real estate is one of the things that always comes up. I agree. Okay, well, Ben, thanks so much for being on with us today uh, and telling us all about your business. I know you're a frequent uh, contributor in the Sub2 Deals Forum. We appreciate that. Appreciate your, your sharing your knowledge with us. And uh, we really appreciate you coming on today and talking to us about your business. Well, thank you for the honor, sir. <laughs> all righty. Well, sub tours, that is it for this episode of the Sub2 Deals Show. You can find the show notes for this episode along with a complete transcript at sub2podcast.com. If you enjoyed this episode, we would love it if you would subscribe and give us a five-star rating and review, review on Apple Podcasts. It only takes a minute, and it helps others discover the show. You can subscribe as well as leave a rating and review by visiting Apple Podcasts and just do a quick search for the sub 2 Deal show. It would also be great if you would consider sharing our podcast with your fellow real estate investors who you think might benefit from it. And finally, if you haven't yet, you can join our free Facebook Subject 2 group at sub2forum.com. You can also find lots more resources to help grow your real estate investing business at sub2deals.com. So until next time, keep learning, keep talking to sellers, and you will buy some houses.